praise God. God is a good God. Greetings. It is such a joy being with you on Choices. As we continue our discussion on where we left off last week, we want to challenge all, and I emphasize all our leaders, whether in the home, church, workplace, community, school, nation, or the world at large, be the best leader you can. Leadership is awesome responsibility. Some leaders are born and others develop the necessary skills. Some of the qualities that should be displayed in a leader are integrity, vision, inspiration, strategic and critical thinking, interpersonal communication, open-mindedness and creative, uh, creativity, responsibility and dependability. We want to challenge our leaders to continue to improve on your skill. Leaders must lead and not be led. Thank God you are with choices. We are enjoying your presence. Stay with us. And God continue to bless you and beautiful Guyana. Thank you. You know, I, I would like to look at life as being on to those of you who might be mathematically inclined to being on a continuum. Um, before you go on a developmental trajectory, there is always there's always a starting point. Where do you start? And uh, how you treat with that start um, is critical in terms of moving along the, the continuum. And I'm speaking in the context of the scripture that we, we, we mentioned, um, Luke 12, which talks about if you are not careful to take care of, of something that has been given to you, how will you expect to receive um, your own and so we are always as human beings we are always under the watchful eyes of, of God and of persons and so he looks carefully to see what are those qualities that you have before um, he actually gives you something he looks carefully to see if you are committed to a process, if you are dedicated to a process before you could be given, um, given your own. And uh, this covers all facets of life. A family, for example, you might desire to be married, you might desire to have children, but do you have the capacity or that kind of commitment and dedication to see, um, you know, to see what has been given to you become prosperous. You might be given an opportunity to, to manage a school, to manage a church, to manage. And when that opportunity comes to you, what do you do? Do you run away? Do you can't find you? Um, how, how will you expect that God, you know, will reason his mind, you know what? This woman or this man is ready. And therefore, um, it's time for this person to receive their own. And so it, it is so important um, in life that that starting point that we, we, we try as much as possible to get right. And we are cognizant of the fact that, that there are people who may have a bad start, but a bad start, as we saw in the scripture, um, that we looked at with David, the men who were discontented in distress and death, how David teach and train and, and garner the, those men into, into men of, of, of purpose. And so it is important also for us to surround ourselves um, with people who, who, has, uh, who are living examples. You know, I remember in a sociology class, I think it was Dr. David Brown, who said, he said, look to the class, he said, you have a primary group and you have what you call a reference group. And he said, in the primary group is the group which you are used in, in there. 
But he said sometimes the group that you're hewn in, sometimes the group has not really rubbed anything off seriously on you. But he said there's a reference group. There's a group now that you could use as a reference. That's a group where you could find people who could teach, who could train and, and empower. And he said you could also look to those groups. And so we, we want to have this discussion, the whole issue of, you know, how you treat with what, um, with others, stuff before God decides to give you your own. There to know. Well, Jesus uh, held a seminar. And in this seminar, it's recorded in Luke chapter 16, he made an observation that I would like, we are going to have this conversation about. It's, well, let's allow his, the seminar leader to share. He said in Luke 16 and verse 10, Whoever can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. This is, this is an amazing statement. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. That's not rocket science, but it, it is a very important observation for all of us, people in industry, whether it be public or private. In your own family, as you look your, at you, at your children and you want to um, delegate certain duties, certain authorities to get different things done. Uh, you're guided by, we are all guided by this principle. If somebody is, to put it in other words, if somebody's a rotten rope, you don't give them responsibility because you know who they are. They're a rotten rope. That's what we said, Jesus said. If you are dishonest with very little, you know, you will also be dishonest with much. It's not the assignment that brings the change. As uh, Randolph spoke earlier, and he spoke about the integrity. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? He is trusting us what we are sharing here. These are true riches. And this is where we want to go. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? So we want to look at this whole question. What was he driving at? What was he driving at? Dr. Terrell, what do you believe Jesus was driving at? Uh, thank you, Bishop. Um, we can apply this to so many things, as you rightly said, the corporate world, family, our personal lives, one that we are simply stewards. Everything we own, everything we have, God give it to us. And therefore, we are accountable. Here's a nice word, accountability, whether it is in the corporate world, in your family, in your own personal life, there must be accountability for what you have been given. Um, secondly, what we were given, the resources we have, should be used for the benefit, not only of ourselves and self-aggrandizement, but for others. And uh, as I'm talking about others, Bishop, there is something that is coming to mind, and that's for the corporate world and, and, and who we put in position to manage that which uh, people were given, we, we want to be very careful with that. But also, I see this whole thing about relationship. I, I believe Jesus, in Jesus' mind, this is a supposition, so don't kill me, but I, in Jesus' mind, relationships are more important than money and should be, uh, and should be served by money rather than the other way around. People are important, Bishop. People, the way we treat people, the way we deal with people, even as we are in a position of management. People, relationships. And so in our families, how I relate to my wife is, uh, is very important. And, uh, you know, there is a concept in the world where people would say to us, it doesn't matter what a man does in his 
private life, as long as he is publicly doing well and ruling and so on. Well, I have an issue with that. What you do privately will affect how you, uh, you're standing publicly. And so I shall be held accountable by all these uh, esteemed gentlemen on this program in terms of how I treat my wife, my children. All of that is being a good steward. Deal with your wife according to knowledge. Don't exasperate your children. Deal with what God has given to you uh, in a manner that will bring glory to God. And the final thing I want to identify is model. Uh, a lot of us are asked to do things, but we didn't necessarily have a good model to be a good father, um, to be a good husband, to be a good uh, brother or so. And so a model is absolutely important. Some people need to seek out models also. Uh, you can live your life, your entire life, in a state of disrepair, not knowing that there's much more for you, but because you are not, you don't know what that model is to, to uh, be a good steward. You haven't seen it. And so a model is important, of, a model of stewardship, a model of accountability, a model of integrity, a model of honesty. Those models are important as we look at what Jesus is saying. Amen. You know, Bishop and the team, I would like to share a real story that occurred, and I know Bishop is very familiar with it. And I was, I guess I was brought up with a sense of responsibility very early in my life. I don't know if it's by accident, because I was a firstborn, or it was a deliberate effort by my parents. But I remember as I was about to be married over 25 years ago, I struggled to find a home to live in. Much of the arrangements I had put in place had fallen apart. And I came upon a very good friend who gave, literally gave me her home to live in, in Lama Gardens. I was tempted to call her name, but God bless her. She gave me that home to live in, free, myself and wife, free for two and a half to three years. A home that she would rent to the diplomatic community. Very beautiful place. When that time was coming to an end, she came home and she offered me to, she told me she was selling it and she was offering me the property to buy and as a young couple, the prices she was offering, I never forget 25 years ago, $16 million. I really couldn't afford 16. And um, I was trying my best to see if I can find it someplace. I couldn't, but she said she wanted us to get it. We couldn't. At the end of the day, we had to give up on that transaction. I remember I thought of going back to the coast to live. And I, I raised it with you, Bishop. And you said to me, Winston, you can't find a property in the city to purchase. And I said to you, Pastor, I can't afford it. And you said, you try? And I said, but Pastor, I, didn't, I can't afford it. And you asked me, but you try? And I said, but Pastor, I, I can't afford it. That dialogue went on for about four or five, six rounds. And then finally, I had to give up because you kept on asking me, did you try? By simply trying, and I would like to connect it to what happened with that previous transaction. We searched for a property and found one where a woman came back from Barbados and sold me a property far below the market price. We were about to buy one way down at the last street in South for almost double the price that this woman sold me the property for. And I strongly believe that the connection between the way I treated the first property provided the way how I got the second, the leadership I submitted myself to in my pastor created the mindset of possibilities and the two combined made it possible for my family to acquire the kinds of things we have acquired today. So I go back to the scripture and the scripture is true. If you don't take care of another man's, who will give you your own? 
You know, Reverend Tassano, that's a powerful example. And I believe we are touching the pulse. We are looking at solutions. We are looking at living examples. And you may be looking at this program today and wondering, well, you know, how can this be possible for me? You know, these principles that we're talking about is applicable not only for our individual lives, for our families, for corporations. The thing about it is that we must understand that these principles that we're talking about of taking care and stewardship and being faithful is not a given. We have to be intentional. We have to make the sacrifices. We have to go after it. And when we begin to apply these principles to our own lives, to the responsibilities that have been given to us, we can very well come into a blessing of our own because we have been faithful in another man's uh, business. And so what we're saying today, we must encourage ourselves. I think it was Bishop Messiah I first heard this comment from. He said, you know, as we talk about uh, not being uh, given anything from our whole parents and so on and so forth, not having a mother, I heard him say, you may not have been given a baton, but you can make one and pass it on to the next generation. What a blessing that would be. As you come into your own, we can, we can allow these principles that are time-tested, that will outlive us, uh, because assets in itself, they will depreciate, they will deteriorate. But what will remain, these principles that are taught, that are put into practice, will transcend generations and we can see and come into a blessing uh, that will not only benefit us, but our generations to come. So don't give up. Ensure that you practice these principles, these time-tested principles, and God will bring you into your own. I want to submit, thank you, Pastor Paul. I want to submit this afternoon to us as a nation, as a people. As we discuss stewardship, taken from Luke chapter 16, I think, yes, yeah, verse 10 to verses 10 to 12. What I'm gathering, people, is that stewardship is also leadership. Why am I saying this? As we internalize and as we discuss, I recall our program last week. And um, we looked at King David, well, he wasn't king at the time, we looked at David and how he molded 400 persons. But it wasn't just 400 persons, average on average, it wasn't just about 400 persons. It was persons in the state of desperateness, a state of discontentment, discontentment and a state of debt. Now, how did these persons get to this state, these three states, desperateness, discontentedness, and in debt, that they had to leave their nation and go and go to find someone who they can trust. They believed in the leader, they believed in this person, and they went and they committed to this person to lead them out of the state of discontentment, desperateness, and debt. They trusted him. He was a steward to them. And as we discussed last week, he led them to a place of uh, contentment. Uh, he took them out of debt and he gave them happiness. We, we, this, if you read First Samuel uh, chapter 22, I think it was, you will get the, and, and continue, you will get the entire account of that. No, I said stewardship is also leadership. So we learned that David led these persons who were, who were not the best in society. He was given these persons in this state of, 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 of disrepair and he molded and he, and he shaped, Dr. Terrell spoke about molding and he shaped and he guided and he brought them to a level of leadership that they were, that they were his right arm, they were his advisors and they went on to do great and good things. 
Now the question is asked, whoever can be trusted with very little? David was trusted with very little. And he molded and he shaped and he became the king of an, of an entire nation. At that time, he was a fugitive. He was running and hiding. Stewardship is a leadership. Once we can understand this, once we, firstly, we should not drive people to this state of desperateness, indebtedness, and discontentment. That's the first thing. As a steward, we should never allow persons to come to this state. That is what I want to share. As leaders and as stewards of nations, of, co of corporations, of our homes first, persons should never become to these three states never get to this level, that we have to mold them or someone else has to mold them and shape them. Do not push people away. Once you are elected, once you are being appointed, once you are being placed in charge as a husband, even a single parent as a mother or a single parent father, we mold and we shape and we lead stewardship. You know, as we continue this discussion, um, the issue of of, of mindset, I don't think we could we could you know overlook the issue of mindset or or culture. Um, you know, there's a saying: you could take a horse to the water, but you can't make the horse drink it. And so, the issue of of, of mindset, because in the midst of a teaching, sometimes people do not want to change because of how they they are oriented. Um, for example, I, 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 I look at the church, for example, you go to the toilet and you see people, you know, urinating and, um, and missing the bowl. You see people using the seats and the next thing you know, the seats, you know, the seat is being damaged or thrown one side. You, you see people doing different things you know, with the resources, with God's resources and so on. And it, it, as we have this discussion, it dawned upon me that some people would never own anything until they have a change of, of, of the mindset, until they start to see things differently. Because all of these things, like we have said, these are God's resources. Even the house that you have, God gave that to you. He allowed you to get that. The, the, the family that you have, these things didn't just happen. He allowed these things to happen. And so, you know, you look at people how they treat with these things. Um, and uh, you, you begin to understand, you know, something. Some people wouldn't get certain things because of, of, of the mindset that they have. My father taught me, I, I, I'm not saying that I, I believe wholly and truly what he said. But he said to me many years ago, he said, if you don't have a, if a, if a man doesn't have a bike, do not lend him a bike. Because he gave one of my brothers his bicycle and he came back with the bike in two halves. And so, you know, he said, if, and so he had this kind of, um, this kind of organization. But people can change, but that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the issue of mindset, because some people apparently do not only teach and you talk, they, they, they don't respond. And so I think that's a serious consideration that we have to take uh, as we have discussed. One one of the things that um, one of the mistakes we make, I mean, we heard about models. It is very sad that for many persons, they're based on their relationships, the people they hang with, that they associate with, are not the empowering model type. And it's for you that we, we're not criticizing you. It's not the way how you dress. We're not criticizing you. We're trying to get your attention. And I think uh, um, Jesus who ran this seminar, this is not a, a, um, a Christian principle. This is a universal principle, universal principle. And if you understand that, it will change the way how, how you think. And he simply said, listen, if you are not trustworthy with someone else's property, it's a universal principle. What do I mean by that? Anybody could apply it. A Hindu, a Muslim, a Rastafari, a Christian, an atheist, an agnostic. If you, this is what Jesus meant. 
Jesus said, if you are faithful, trustworthy in another man's property, you will own your own. But if you have not been trustworthy, who will give you your own? And just examine and see how this thing is playing out. Our concern is the class stratification is what it is. And there are many young people who want to break out. But the people who they are wrong, their views are not upward and outward looking. I, I heard a man shouting once in a conversation. I wasn't in the conversation. It took place several yards away from where I lived at that time. And guess what that man was shouting to the top of his voice? I ignorant. I ignorant. And he was wearing this like a trophy. He was communicating to the group, perhaps, that he would deal with anybody. So his certification was I ignorant. Loud. I was relaxing, reclining. And I slowly got up, trying to not to be seen, but to see this man with this ignorant trophy, who he was. And, you know, I saw him and I thought to myself, well, if, if you're ignorant, you should be quiet, you know. And this, this, there are people who celebrate things that they should not celebrate. We really want to encourage you, whoever you are. And this has not only got implications for ordinary people, but people who you put in position in that same seminar, Jesus said, listen. Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest in much. <laughs> I mean, this is not rocket science. He made that very clear. Let us be mindful. We want to go forward. Stewardship is a, is a broad principle of leadership. But we want you to see a model. Be connected with those who can model and show you this principle. God bless you. You're watching Choices. We'll see you next week. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Celestia on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.